We're back with a recent new release movie review in theaters, and I'm here to tell you if you should check it out or not. We're talking about 2023 release of Air. What is the Air? It is Air Jordan, directed by Ben Affleck, and we see Ben Affleck and Matt Damon on the big screen together for the first time in a while. One of my favorite movies is obviously their 1997 Best Picture nominee, Goodwill Hunting. And here we see them in their late 40s, back together. And is it worth seeing? We shall find out. So I like period films when they're done right. This movie takes place in 1984. And it uses CGI to kind of recreate things with the way they were, which I actually liked. There's a scene where one of the main characters played by Matt Damon is in Las Vegas and they used CGI to recreate the strip of the air and even the aerial footage looks awesome. So that was really cool to me and they really tried hard to kind of take you back to the 80s. I like P.T. Anderson and the way he does period films. His period films are immaculate and always feel like you're there at the particular point in time. Sometimes it seems like they try a little too hard. This movie used a lot of file footage of music videos and pop culture or just anything that happened in the 80s. They would build you up to the fact that you were in the 80s with all this file footage. But then actually in the film, I love the details of the TV sets. You see a lot of vintage Sony Trinitrons, period correct VCRs, period correct desktop computers it was just done very well. So that really made me happy because I don't like to see period films if they're not very well done or there's things that seem out of character. Even his rental car was an early 80s Ford LTD and that was, it was great. All the cars were right, the dress was right. It just felt very authentic to the time. So like I said, Matt Damon plays, maybe I didn't mention that yet. Matt Damon plays this guy, Sonny Vaccaro, who was kind of like the basketball talent recruiter for Nike Corporation. And Phil Knight was played by Ben Affleck. And you were seeing them try, they were kind of getting ready to maybe close up their basketball division. And they didn't really have a top talent. But the Sonny Vaccaro guy was like super into the whole basketball world. He'd followed all these people's careers. And he wanted them to roll the dice and gamble on the rookie Michael Jordan. And I had read some articles that they purposely, purposely never actually see. They don't have anybody play the Michael Jordan character. Viola Davis plays the mother. And I believe that Michael Jordan specifically requested that. She did a great job. And Chris Tucker plays the VP of one of the VPs for Nike. He did a great job too. So it was just a very enjoyable film and it left me with very positive feelings. You just kind of see how they get him to pick Nike to represent their brand. And they created a whole shoe specifically around him when he could have cho chosen Converse or his Adidas were the other two companies that were pursuing him. Obviously, you know the outcome. My Nike Air Jordans are an iconic shoe, but it's just interesting to see the story on how that came to be and all the players and moving parts that came to the culmination of him going with Nike was just very interesting to me. And like I said, it was an underdog story because if you watch the movie, you will find out that Nike wasn't anywhere close to being in the running and just kind of how the Sonny Vaccaro guy made that happen. It was just a very cool film. It, I kind of got like nostalgic vibes to want to watch The Wedding Singer because that movie is another 80s kind of period trying to be that point in time that I love. Not in anywhere of the similar vein of movies, that's a comedy. But this movie has a lot of laughs in it and a lot of serious lighthearted moments in it. And it makes me want to get a pair of Nike waffle soles, which I don't think you can get right now. They kind of bring them back occasionally. I had a J. Crew pair of Nike waffle soles when I worked for J. Crew back in the mid 2000s. And I wore those things until there was not any soul left hardly. And so the thing that comes closest to it and that I could get now and that I still wear on occasion is my Nike Cortez Classics. Never got into the uh, Air Jordans. They are pricey. So 
let's talk about ratings for this film. IMDb was 7.8 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes was 91% critics average. Google users were 93%, and I am kind of along the lines with those guys. I am a high score for this movie, 4 out of 5. Is it the best movie? Is it going to win an Academy Award? Probably not, but it was very well done, and it was very enjoyable. And I just want to be entertained. It had like an hour and 52-minute runtime. I found myself shedding some tears and getting emotional in the theater. That's a good barometer for me on what my review is going to be. And just kind of seeing this success story unfold before your eyes is just really neat. So if you're a fan of pop culture, if you're a fan of the 80s, if you like corporate biographies or just underdog stories, you will really enjoy this movie. And I think it's worth seeing in the theater. Uh, it's probably going to be on streaming before you know it if you don't want to go out. I saw it at a matinee and it was like $10. So to me, that was a good value to go see it on a Thursday afternoon. So check it out. Let me know if you've seen it and if you like it and if I am correct with my higher score. Until next time, we will see you then.